with the slowing growth in the Chinese economy and increasing debt and the U.S.-China tension getting even greater, uh, how would that impact on your assessment on Baba's in the future? Great. These are these are all great questions. So you may not love this answer, but we have derivatives on a VIE. So we have call options on the ADR, which is the VIE structure that gives us access to the ownership of BABA. All right. So uh, we watch that quite carefully. There is a contractual relationship. We believe that the Chinese government will requires capital markets. It would be uh, very strange for them to sort of destroy things. Where where the VIE structure could break down is possibly with a smaller firm, probably not with BABA. But if we saw that happening with a smaller firm, then we would question what would happen with BABA. So we'd probably see pretty far in advance, similar to hopefully what we saw with Seritage. So we noticed Seritage long before its real decline and we were able to exit. So if there's something threatening the current structure, I believe that we'll see it quite early. Regarding the slowdown in China, it's tricky because oftentimes to find great value, you really have to go to where there's blood in the streets. So as a value investor, you have to sit there and look wrong for a long period of time sometimes before things start moving in the right direction. So you end up looking in places that a lot of people don't want to go. There are a lot of challenges with China. There's challenges with the GDP. There's challenges uh, with the economics. And of course, there's tensions between the U.S. and China. However, BABA is truly an international business. They are operating all over the world. Their earnings and cash flows are growing. And they're looking to exceed, you know, $25 billion a year coming up here in a year or two. They'll be hitting that consistently. So if excluding their cash, their whole business is only $150 million. It's like six years until they bring in the cash that replaces the whole business. So we find it very unlikely that we will lose money on this BABA opportunity. BABA is truly a global player in the cloud space, AI space, and technology space. BABA, Tencent that we own through our NASPERS position, along with Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and some of the big US players. These are the players, and we're so pleased to own a piece of it. And it's a global player. We think it should compete globally. We think in the long term, it will be uh, competing globally and it should be priced globally. So right now we have the Amazons and Googles of the world trading for trillions and Baba earning 20 plus billion a year uh, has recently been selling for under 200 billion. So this is a company that has a long runway ahead of it. Years ago, Although Munger reversed his position, Munger started buying in for $200 a share. We've been buying in more like $80 a share. And we've been using our wheel strategy to buy in the money call options. So our exposure is right now through the calls and the calls are actually quite volatile. All right. So we do see volatile in our own volatility in our portfolio, but these call options go out until December of 2026. So we have in the money call options that we've accumulated for very low prices. In some cases, they've been totally free and we've packed our portfolios with these. We have call options right now on 200,000 shares of Alibaba. And our plan, because we've, we don't have all the cash today to buy all of those calls. All right. So our plan if we reach December of 2026, first of all, we may bring in that capital. We're raising capital every single quarter. We also have our structured dividend capture, which is generating cash for us every single month. So we may raise the money to buy that, but the ultimate plan is to use half of the calls that appreciate to purchase the other half. So it's the move that Buffett did 
when he was buying Goldman Sachs, he was reinvesting Goldman Sachs in the financial crisis. He was investing in Bank of America. He was getting these warrants. And then when they expired, he would sell half and he'd use that cash that he made to make the old the full purchase. And his stock ended up being free. So that's the method that we're using. If they buy back their shares and we buy our entire position, we will own 0.01% of BABA, which is absolutely astonishing. If BABA becomes a trillion dollar business over the next 20 years, we will own $100 million of that business. Next question uh, goes into the structured dividend capture strategy that you are applying. Um, from Krishna, he's wondering how much percentage of the portfolio appreciation actually come from SDC last year. And uh, he can see that the approach as the bull and bear market is market like bull and bear market independent. Is this uh, assessment correct? And as the AUM increases, do you see this strategy still being feasible? Yes, uh, this is very feasible. We can scale this into the hundreds of millions. In fact, if you look at the companies that were applying this to, many of them are 100, 200, 300 billion dollar firms. And so there's a huge market for these. This is also only a piece of our overall strategy. We have our existing infinite compounder portfolio. So if you imagine that we're running say 20% cash through this, our portfolio could be absolutely huge. We could have a $2 billion portfolio and still be executing our structured dividend capture on 20% of our internal portfolio. So we really can scale this strategy. There's nobody else doing this. The space is wide open. It's quite sad actually, because we don't have the capital, we just watched this pile of gold expire Every single month, we can't capture it all. So I encourage all of you to go out there and try and capture some of this. This strategy, based on our back testing, is evolving, okay? And we're not always putting the same amount of capital into the strategy. But if we were to apply the attribution last year, attribution would be about 30% coming from structured dividend capture, and the rest, the 70%, coming from the remaining portfolio. But let me tell you a little detail. When we showed, I showed the slide of our ownership. Our portfolio currently is a little under 24 million, but our ownership is like 24 and a half million. Okay. So technically we have a little bit of our core infinite compounders on margin. All right. We have like a million in margin on a $20 million portfolio, we have about 5% in margin. So we are still executing structured dividend capture, but we're executing it more out of discipline. We've reduced the amount that we're putting into each of these opportunities, but as we raise more capital, we will definitely be putting that capital into the structured dividend capture opportunities. We have now, because we recognize things like selling the put in the money, and we recognize things like how quickly and how much of the time volatility decay over the last 21 days, we now have extended the duration on the puts and we write them in the money and we're drastically augmenting our expected results. We're almost doubling our expected results. And we thought we were being conservative previously selling out of the money puts, but as we analyzed through Monte Carlo simulations, we realized quite clearly that we're capturing everything that falls and nothing that is flatter going up a little bit. And so by simply selling an in-the-money put, we still capture all the ones that fall, but we capture a lot more that are flat and go up. And then we get those dividends and the premium for the call as well. So we are really improving the strategy all the time as we move along. I'm quite confident in these results. They're astonishing results, 24% annualized over 20 plus years and we're running this algorithmically based on what we would do today. We're going all the way back 20 years and saying, run the software on the 13Fs, tell us the companies we'd buy and tell us what would have happened. And what it told us is 24% annualized with a little bit of volatility. It's amazing. And so 
We will be executing this. What this also does is allows us to be incredibly patient. Imagine the value fund sitting there with 20% cash. That is a drag on performance. Everybody's competing. We're all trying to get the highest numbers, but we're trying to do it safely. And so value funds tend to hold cash so they can allocate it to the new opportunity coming in the future. They want to make sure they have that opportunity. We've now developed a way to hold some cash, but not have it be a drag on the fund. And we don't need to allocate that to a 10% opportunity annualized. We can be patient. We can wait for that 20, 25, 30% annualized opportunity because it's not going to be a drag on our portfolio. And so as we raise more money, we will absolutely keep investing in the structured dividend capture. Right now, the whole portfolio is the infinite compounders. That's not a terrible thing. Our infinite compounder portfolio is amazing. But as we raise capital, I think we're going to see our returns go up.